It's kind of like an old joke. The only way AI is going to take the job of a designer is for people to know what it is that they want a designer to design. The job of a designer is so much more than just drawing rectangles. It's communicating with different people, gathering feedback, working to requirements, working to constraints. All of that stuff is about communicating between humans. But I do think it would be silly to completely ignore the massive change that generative AI and large language models will have on our lives and our careers. And in this video, I want to share six tips I've found for using AI when searching for jobs. I've used a few of these techniques myself. I've recently just got a new job here in London and I'm going to walk you through them. So one thing AI is really good at is consuming large amounts of information all at once. So here I've got Perplexity Pro and if I find a job spec, I can just grab the whole thing, copy it and paste it in. And then I can also say, here's a copy of my CV and drag that in. And then I can just ask it, take a look at this job spec and tell me what's missing from my CV. And you can also do this with more than just the job spec. You can bring in documents from the company's website, their about page. And what's cool about this is this model has also taken a look at other places on the internet. It's not just restricted itself to the information I've given it. And this is a big feature of DeepSeek R1, the O3 models, Claude 3.7 Sonnet. So all of these later, uh, I think they're called thinking large language models, can go and do research by themselves basically. And here you can see, I've actually got some like quite good concrete advice. It's saying I don't explicitly highlight growth specific experience or specific monetization things. So it's some really useful stuff that I can add in. So the exact same tool can then also come up with a list of interview questions. And it's really useful because it's read through the job spec, it's read through my experience, maybe it's got some extra context about the company. So it's a really, really good place to then just be like, hey, give me a set of 20 or 30 practice interview questions. And then when it comes to actually practicing for those interview questions, what I like to do is use an app like voicenotes.com or even one uh, which I've got on my Mac called Mac Whisper. These are transcription tools and I'm sure this is built into basically everyone's phone now. And I just like to practice saying things out loud. Normally I'll go for a walk, I'll have my phone or my headphones and I'll just practice answering interview questions out loud. And because I'm speaking out loud, it's a lot easier than writing them out. I can get through way more. And because it's transcribing them, I can then go back and see, hey, oh, I didn't mention this example, or I fumbled a bit here. Let me practice what I would say for this specific example. Another tool I want to mention is Descript. Now Descript is the video editor that I primarily use when editing my own videos. And it's so, so cool. It's a way to take a video, transcribe it all, and then edit the video by just editing text and moving text around. The first time I used it, it was absolutely magical. And I think what you could do when applying for jobs is you could create an intro video for yourself and put that on LinkedIn or put that as part of a job application. Now, this probably isn't suitable for every industry, but if you think you're applying to the kind of place where they would look favorably upon this, it's definitely worth trying out. And I know video editing can be super scary and recording yourself can be super scary, but Descript makes it super easy to use. So I've got a link to them in my description if you wanna give it a go. Recently, there have been so many AI tools that have popped up to make it easier to make notes in meetings. And on one side of this, you've got the like built-in ones. So Zoom and Google Meet have their own versions of this. And on the other side, you've got these kind of weird robot things like I think Firefly is one and it enters your video call and everyone else knows that you're using like an AI transcript. One which I really like, which I haven't seen loads of people mention is Granola. And Granola is a tech company here in the UK and what they've done is completely transform the UX of automatic meeting transcription. So the way it works is like this. When you're in a meeting, you just scribble out some simple notes just while you're listening and what it does is it enhances the notes you've written using a transcript of that meeting. And I think the reason this would be so good for interviews is because when I've been in interviews, I always am like frantically typing notes about the company or like trying to make notes of something so that I can come back and answer a certain point in more detail. And I often have to apologize to the interviewer, especially if it's happening remotely. 
that, hey, I'm not like getting distracted, I'm just making notes. And what's really cool about this is, if you take a look at this example on the left, I don't think that would be enough to come back to, but it's enough to like guide the AI in what you think the most important points are. So this is a really cool user experience for meeting transcription, and I think could be really helpful for interviews. The very last AI tool, which I think is so useful specifically for when you've got design tasks, is the AI that's built into Figma itself. Now, for this, I'm assuming that if you're doing a design task, you're using Figma, so apologies if you're using something else. But often, I think, when you hand over a Figma file to someone else, you want them to see how organized it is, and you want them to be able to find their way around it. And so what we can do with Figma is actually, if I click through, here you can see I've got lots of frame two, frame three. What I can do is grab this top frame, go down to my actions panel, and just hit rename layers. And you can see, as if by magic over here, it's just gonna start typing out layer names for all of these layers. I think this is so cool. It's just a very, very quick way to save you manually going through and making sure your Figma file looks organized. And there's other design linting plugins and similar things. But at the very least, I think this built-in AI tool means you've got no excuse for not having tidy layers and named layers. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you're in the process of applying for a job right now, good luck. It's a really hard job market out there. And if you've got any questions, I'd love to help. Just drop a comment below. And if it's something that I can help with, I'll definitely get back to you. My name is Parvin. I'm making these videos about how to become a better designer here on YouTube. And I'm making them free for everyone. So if you like this kind of content, it really helps me out if you hit the like button below or maybe hit subscribe so that you don't miss any new ones. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.